Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Oh my God. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Yeah, all sleepy. All sleepy early in the morning at seven o'clock. Yeah, we are sleepy, but we we will do what we need to do. And this morning, we continue with our series of the rosary. Okay, but this time we're going to try to start focusing on how to meditate on the mysteries of the rosary. So remember how we have uh, three, three tips, right? Of how to pray the rosary well. What's the first one? Um, the vocal <coughs> prayers, right? To pray the vocal prayers properly and to mean what you say, to uh, really try and understand what the vocal prayers try to convey and you pray it audibly, right? Number two? Meditate. To meditate on the mysteries. And number three? To offer up the mysteries of the rosary for certain intentions okay so today we'll talk about uh, more about the meditation of the mysteries and and we'll try to uh, do that every day now we will consider one decade uh, of the rosary of the day and try to uh, try to help ourselves as to how we could meditate on the mysteries so that we we relive the mysteries of the rosary the mysteries that the rosary suggests we uh, keep in mind while we are praying the rosary. And you know what? Um, once in a while here in the Kleachko household, we read uh, some books about, uh, about the meditation of the mysteries of the rosary. Okay? We, have, uh, we have several versions of these kinds of books. And it helps to, uh, to bring to mind the gospel scene that we are considering in the mystery uh, of the day and i have some uh, some books that, that i could show you one of these uh, that i have used for a very very long time is this book written by saint jose maria escriba okay uh, simply entitled holy rosary so this carries plenty of meditations on the mystery and then pope francis also came up with his own book now see there you go see a meditation uh, on the mysteries of the rosary by pope francis and there are many others we uh we have used those uh, small shorter versions that uh, we got from the church right so it's a very um helpful practice that when we uh, pray the rosary uh, we can help ourselves with some of these books that help us consider the mystery okay so today what day is it today it's yeah, October 8th is Tuesday, right? Tuesday. So, what are the mysteries today? What, what mysteries do we consider on a Tuesday? Sorrowful. The sorrowful mysteries. And what is the first sorrowful mystery? The agony in the garden. Okay, the agony in the garden. So, after announcing the first sorrowful mystery is the agony in the garden. Then, as we had... As we had uh, indicated we pause a little bit right maybe a few seconds there before we start the our father and in those few seconds the scenes of the agony in the garden should be refreshed in our mind refreshed in our memory <clears throat> and what do we see what do we see in the agony in the garden and how do we bring it back to mind well we see our Lord kneeling on hard ground, right? He tells his disciples, you stay here and watch with me. He puts them in a certain place, maybe at the entrance of that garden, and tells them, stay here, watch with me, and I'll go a little further in and there pray, right? And he kneels on that hard ground. And as he, as he kneels and as he prays, he talks to God the Father and asks him, is this really what you want from me? He, he, he now starts imagining his own passion, all the sufferings that he was going to go through. 
He knew exactly what was going to happen. Remember, he was God. He knew exactly everything that was going to happen to him. Down to the last detail of, of all of the spikes that was going to hit his body when he was scourged. The spit that he would receive from that attendant of the Pharisee. The blows he was going to get on his face. The, the chains, the nails that would pierce his body. The spear that was going to wound his side. The tears of Our Lady. The mockery of the scribes and Pharisees. The heavy weight of the cross. He was seeing all of these things already. And he was asking his father. Do you really want me to go through all of these things for the salvation of souls? And human that he was, he felt afraid. Right? He felt afraid. And he said, if it is your will, please let this cup pass from me. But he also said, thy will be done, right? If this is your will for me, then, then yes, I'm going to drink this cup. Let it be done. But in all of that agony, so he was already imagining all of that suffering. And because of that, he sweat blood. That was the, the intensity of how much he felt. The, the, the suffering that was yet to come. He hasn't even gone through it. And then the devil tempts him. Right? The devil comes around to tempt him. To try to, to, try to uh, distract him from his focus on his suffering. Because that's what the devil does to us. The more we are united with God, the more the devil tries his best to dissuade us from doing the will of God. But then he says, no, if this is your will, I will drink this cup. And since he was agonizing so much, he could, perhaps he felt the burden so heavily that he perhaps was trying to seek consolation from his own apostles. And so he stands up and goes to his apostles again. And, and uh, what does he see? He sees them asleep. Well, how frustrating do you think could that have been for our Lord? In the time of his agony, in the time where he was suffering, the people closest to him couldn't even share in his own agony, in his own suffering. They couldn't even be there to console him. They were asleep. So what does our Lord tell Peter? You can't even watch one hour with me? Is this really the kind of friendship you're going to give me? Are you the people I'm going to entrust my whole church to? You sleepy heads, you can't even join me in this agony? Well, no wonder they were going to escape. No wonder they, would, they couldn't be around for that whole passion and that whole crucifixion. Because even just right there, they were, our Lord was just praying about all of this and they can't even support Him. So He just tells them, Well, pray. Pray that you may not enter into temptation. A beautiful lesson our Lord tells us there too, right? Because sometimes we can be <clears throat> sleepy heads. Sometimes we tend to be too relaxed. And we put our guards down. Okay? And we don't put up a fight. And that is the time temptations come in. Those are the situations when we get tempted by the devil. 
And what does our Lord tell us? Pray. Pray. Prayer is your weapon against temptation. <clears throat> At that particular moment, what our Lord wanted to tell the disciples was, you pray. Because if you don't pray, you're going to get discouraged with what you're about to see. If you happen to witness how they're going to capture me, how they're going to put me in chains, and how one of you, Judas, is going to betray me with a kiss, you are going to get discouraged. Your, your whole life is going to collapse. You're all going to all of a sudden say, well, what happened to you? We thought you were the Messiah. We thought you were the Savior of the world. And here you are being taken away by these priests and the, and, and the temple guards, and, and you're going to be killed. It would have been a very, very big temptation towards discouragement and despair. And our Lord tells them, the only way you can overcome this is to pray, to pray, to pray that you may not enter into this kind of temptation. And so our Lord with a heavy heart goes back to that place where he was praying and tells them, tells God the Father, I'm ready. Okay, I'm ready. Let it be done according to your will. Right? He also uttered the same fiat that our lady told the angel Gabriel when our lady was at that high point where she was being tested if she was going to accept the will of God for her. And Our Lady said, Thy will be done. Our Lord seems to echo the same fiat of Our Lady to God His Father now when He tells them, I will drink of this cup that I am, that you're giving me to drink. Okay? So beautiful, beautiful, beautiful scene and and all of these things we can bring to mind in those those short seconds that that uh, that we try to reflect on the mystery and all throughout the ten hail marys of the first sorrowful mystery we can recall these incidents in this in this gospel scene in the life of our lord and as he stands up and he tells his disciples he tells them get up the hour has come and just as soon as he says that, and he bravely goes out of the, the front of that garden somehow, and there the soldiers and the Pharisees confront him with Judas. Judas, part, who was part of his family, right? His intimate family of the apostles. Judas betrays him with a kiss. You know, you kids may not, may not yet appreciate how painful something like that means. To be betrayed by somebody you have given your trust to. To be abandoned by somebody you had loved and who you thought and hoped loved you back. But apparently, he loves himself more than he loved Jesus. He cared for his, himself more than he cared for Jesus. And that is why it was easy for him to just abandon our Lord and abandon him with the most hypocritical manner. As though conveying some affection for him, but yet at the same time turning around and betraying him. Betraying him with a kiss. A kiss is a sign of affection. A kiss is a sign of intimacy. So all the more does this kind of um, an expression of betrayal becomes more painful. Because you are doing exactly the opposite of what you are expressing outwardly. See? Inside of you, you are a betrayer. You are a traitor. Yet you are using the expression of intimacy and love to betray the person you are betraying okay? with a kiss. And there are many more things we can consider in this particular uh, mystery. 
right? All the way from our Lord being put in chains, being dragged from that from that uh, uh, garden with Peter trying to defend him, right? Peter in the last minute realizes, wait, what are you doing with my Lord? And he tries to, he tries to fight back and he draws a sword and cuts off the ear of, of Malthus, right? The centurion guard and he cuts it off and our Lord, our Lord being the Lord that he is, the compassionate God that he is, Instead of also thinking of himself and wait, they're about to kill me. He goes and picks up the ear of Malthus and performs a miracle right there and puts the ear back. And that was the beginning of the conversion of that centurion. Right? He heals this person who was, a, who was there to arrest him, who was there as an instrument of death for him. Who was there with the intention of killing him yet he goes and heals him and that leads to the conversion of that soul so our Lord even at the time of his agony even at the time when he was already certain to go to his own death still thinks about how he can heal and save people And then we can see how all the other apostles just scattered. In the end, at the very point of his, the turning point of, the, of, of, of Christ's life when he was about to go to his crucifixion, all his friends disappear. All of those people he lived with for three years, intimately united to him. And him to them all abandoned him. They all gave in to cowardice. Everybody disappeared. Jesus was alone. Jesus went through the first days of his, the first day, first evening upon his arrest. <coughs> went through his passion alone. We can resolve after this mystery to never leave Jesus alone. Let us not leave him alone the way the apostles left him alone. To suffer alone. Because that's what happened. All throughout his agony. His crucifixion. All ten of them. Were gone. All ten of them disappeared. Why ten? The eleventh was Judas of course. Betrayed him. But there was one. There was one. Who came around. And stuck by him. But he came back later. After fetching. Our Lady. After picking up Our Lady, and he came back to accompany Jesus. And who was that apostle? St. John. John. Of course, Peter also came back. But he came back only to betray Jesus again. Right? And after that, disappeared again. And was nowhere to be found. Until three days later. But John, John, the one who really loved him, stuck by him but he was able to stick by him only after picking up our lady so he clung to our lady he had our lady by his side and that contributed to his own strength in facing the crucifixion and death of our lord by the foot of the cross but we are getting ahead of ourselves but these are the very beautiful scenes that we can call to mind when we are praying the first sorrowful mystery of the Holy Rosary. More of these folks tomorrow. We're off to Mass now. Bye.